All right, halfway house. It is Monday, about noon. I'll try a little wide angle action this time, see how it comes out. So, we got this fine automobile, second gen. Some of y'all might know it, some of y'all might recognize it. It's a lot different than it was years ago, but it's been passed around all over Texas, all over God's green earth. And my buddy bought it five years ago or so. And it was pretty rough, but uh, it ran really good. He did a bunch of different turbo combinations and you know, did compounds at one point. And I don't even know what that is, a 64 or 66, I don't know. But uh, it was rough around the edges to say the least. And uh, quit running on him one day and he had it over at my buddy's shop over here. And my old roommate was supposed to be painting it and this is as far as he got. And then, then it sat even longer and then the fuel pump wouldn't turn on. And his wiring was all hacked together and I kept trying to give him this harness I had. and. Anyway, years later, fast forward, his brothers, his little brothers over here, and like, hey man, give this harness to your brother, get that truck going. So they did. Uh, pump turned on, wouldn't pump any fuel, put more fuel in the tank, so it wouldn't pump any fuel. So they flat towed it over here, as you can see. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this though, but uh, there's a huge. It's like right where the shadow is. There's a huge bubble all the way around. So it needs tires. It needs two of everything. So anyway, they flat towed it over here. He had another spare air dog that had been laying around for years, so I swapped that. It turns on as well, doesn't pump any fuel, and he's like, where do we go from here? I'm like, dude, start over. Let's uh, put a sump on it, let's put a fast on it, and go from there. So I ordered one for him. Haven't had time to mess with it, really, so uh, I was going to do this last Monday, and it rained. Um, anyway, so here we are today. I got started without y'all. Give you a, a couple uh, pointers. First of all, Make sure you got the wrong size hole saw. Um, what I do, since he said he put fuel in it, he said he put a lot of fuel in it, I wanted to, that and I don't have my tranny jack here, so I wanted to drain the fuel before I drop the tank. It's a lot easier when you're by yourself, especially on the ground. So, drill through there. Um, it was coming out too slow, so I got it bigger. And I made sure to etch this into the tank so I can, you know, even though I'm gonna have a bigger pilot hole, I can still grab. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I don't really wanna lay in this stuff, so. But anyway, so then I drilled a bigger hole so it drained faster. And, you know, make sure your buckets have cracks in them and, you know, make sure you're off drinking a beer when it's topped off so it starts spilling all over the place and, you know, then you're going to have to lay in this stuff. So, all good advice. So, what I'm going to do now is drop the tank. Uh, it's really easy when there's no fuel in it. Imagine that. So, uh, he doesn't know what kind of pickup he has on it. He doesn't know what kind of return he has on it. I don't know if it's got a draw straw. I don't know if he's running the, the factory stuff. I don't know. So, we're going to find out. That's the reason I'm dropping the tank. Where is that... God, this poor truck. You know, he blew a boot off and fucked up his hood. You know, the usual. So this looks like a pretty simple O-ringed, uh, the bolts are O-ringed as well on the sump. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get to work. All right, here we go. Fancy supply and return sump. Pretty simple. I like these because these are O-ringed as well as this. Um, I've done a few of this kind of style O-ring ones and haven't had any issues. We used to always run the gasket kind that you just silicone the crap of and uh, make sure you silicone the bolt bolts and I've had good luck with those too. This is a 165 gallon um, on the 8.5 to 04.5. So I believe this is the one that pulls the signal from this factory fuel pump that would be um, up front, not the one in the tank. I'm pretty sure that's why I went with this one. So, I've had good luck with these. I've done a bunch of air dogs too, had good luck with those. Uh, the shop I used to work for did nothing but fast and we had very little issues. So, I always recommend fast. Second gen life, make sure you got a spare truck in the bed because you, you know damn well that you don't have a straight panel on this damn thing. All right, so once you wheel your hot rod out of the puddle of diesel you just created, crawl in here, see what we got. As you can see, there's my hole. So, these from what I remember aren't too bad. Okay, looks like he's got a return there. Not sure how I'm gonna delete that. We'll figure that out later. Anyway, you got your filler neck, you got your vent, undo those. Then you gotta find your wiring right there. Undo all that crap. And then you got two straps, one here, one there. I Man, if I remember right, it's been a while since I dropped one of these tanks. I think they're 15 mil. I made a mess. So as you can see, the old plumbing and all that crap, we're ripping all that crap out. We're starting all over. I mean, zip ties everywhere, loop-de-loos. You know, kink toeses and all kinds of crap. This one's been so long and I've got so much flat real estate. I kind of felt up here where the 
Um, looks like, feels like the factory sitting in is about here. So just to get it out of the way, I decided to move it here. So that's what I did there. And that's why I did it. Good or bad, I don't know. We're gonna find out. Oh, nice. This poor truck, man. All right, once you've got enough dirt in your eyes and fuel in your mouth, ready to move on to the next step. So, drag the tank out. I had to jack the truck back up because this thing's too low. I couldn't get it out of there. This is a massive tank. So, it did have a draw straw. I think there's supposed to be a vent there. I'm not positive, but a little rusty. I'll clean this back up and plug that. Bitch, forgot how much of a bitch these are. Anyway, I got them. Oh, there's supposed to be a vent there. Look how dirty that is. Cool. I haven't finished drilling my hole. Started kind of putting this together. Um, he does have a broken bed bolt where this is supposed to go, so I don't have to get creative there. So, oh, that's pretty straightforward. This one goes from the tank. That one goes to the engine. And this is your return right here. Pretty straightforward. This is super straightforward. Got a relay right there. Um, that's your fuse holder. Nope. Oh, this might have a different plug. Oh no, these use a different style these days. Huh. Interesting. So I guess these just use key on power. I lied. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. Hopefully, you know, they usually give you within a quarter inch of an F-hose, so don't make any mistakes. It won't reach. I'm actually out of beer. I'm going to make a beer run. I got the Corvette. I don't know if you can see it. She needs to get some miles put on it before it gets put into daily driver. All right, tank's ready to go back in. I got this all pookied because that grommet is trash, so that's definitely going to leak. Um, save this and... Where's it at? This little coupler, I'm gonna put in line to go to my, what used to be the return, which goes there, which is still on the truck. And uh, this used to be the supply, so join these two together. So I can use two um, quick connects. Kinda got it cleaned up just so it doesn't look like the rest of these hoses look fairly decent. Clean up the tanks, actually eh, fairly clean. I mean, for 20 years old, 20 plus years old. So I think the tank's ready to go back in. Be careful with these, these break all the time and they're an absolute nightmare. So just be patient. Um, Dodge orients them up and down so you can't hardly get to this bottom tang. And then this one, at least it's on the outside, but it's still a bitch. Got this loosely mocked up. You know, these are still semi-tight. Just get out of the damn light here. These are still loose. Um, and I save everything, so I had an extra one of these. This kit only comes with one, but for the, so this is the return going back to the sump. So if you kind of already got a 90 going, you know, get you halfway there. It's a lot cleaner looking. So they usually run these at the injection pump. So I've got an extra one, so I'm gonna run this at the injection pump. Another thing, these came with the sump. These are not push lock. Gotta watch out for that. See, this one is a push lock. Notice the, the bevel difference, the taper, whatever you wanna call it, the barb. Um, this is not push lock. These are rated to 300 PSI, I believe, with no clamp. I don't know what these are rated at. A couple of PSI with no clamp. So, just something to watch out for. Luckily, I've got a couple of extras. Um, so, yeah. Um, another thing, these are half-inch MPT, which is common for the sumps and fasses and air dogs and shit. Pretty standard size, so half-inch MPT is your friend. I think we're ready. And the reason I didn't put this in yet, because I don't want this to be in the way, because this is going to be, like, right where my head is. When I'm up in here trying to get these on there. So, uh, again, that's probably going to leak. So, I'm trying to put some pookie on it, get it to dry flat. But not going to happen. Let's go back together with it. All right, got her all buttoned up. Got all this clean wiring under here. So, on these, all you got, you know, positive, negative. And then you have one wire, which is your signal, which goes to key on. As far as I know, there's no, and I checked. Got my power probe. I don't think there's any key on powers. I think these are all power all the time. So you got to run to this fuse box in here. And he's already got one in there. Um, which is, I don't know, pretty sketchy. But uh, I don't know what this is. I mean, actually, uh, these were both key on power. This one wouldn't fit here, so I just swapped them. Oh, oh that's sketchy. You make sure to... Oh, yeah, that doesn't stand very good. Oh, all right, we'll figure that out. But uh, I did check the power. It does come on with key on. What is going on here? Maybe you got a... Oh, there we go. Anyway, I got a well, service loop so you can wiggle her out of there. This is where she ended up. 
Got your supply to the fast, got your return from the fast back to the deal. Got your wire and your supply to the engine. And I don't know if you can see it, but I usually, because uh, they give you like an extra 37 feet of wire for uh, harness for this. So uh, I usually tuck it up about on one of the mounts, try to hide it as best you can. Just look at this fine automobile. Yeah. All right, one jug down. Doesn't look like any leaks yet, other than the mess I'm making here. So uh, one more thing, we are gonna have to crack these injection lines. I think these are already cracked if I remember right, yeah. So even though these do have a electronic injection pump, the injectors are still mechanical. So we will have to bleed these um, and then she should fire up. Hopefully, in theory, hypothetically. Oh my goodness, it's alive for the first time in years. I cracked the first four and I cracked them more and then I cracked them more and then I cracked them more and then finally got a fire out of two or three and tied that one up and then it fired right up and so then I made a mess. It's squirting all the way over there. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Throw a little bit of coal. Let's see if we got any brakes. Got brakes. Oh, barely. Oh, yeah. Not enough to spool it up. These brakes are awful. I have no clue what injectors are in here or what turbo that is, but uh, most of the smoke appears to be coming from uh, the exhaust pipe, not the tip, so. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Look at that. Shut her down. Shut her down. See what we got going on here. Oh yeah. Maybe that's what's burning. Burn a little oil. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Motherfucker. What do we got going on here? Where's it coming from? It just coming from there? Why does it sound like it's coming from up here? It sounds like it's coming from up here somewhere. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh yeah. Yeah. Holy hell. Cool, it runs, come pick it up. Not my problem. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I was hoping to get the fuck out of here and tell him to come pick it up and leave me some cashola somewhere, but uh, I don't think he's gonna be driving this. Give him a call, see what's up with this oil leak. Anyway, it does run. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man, what a mess. <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll have to figure this oil leak out. I mean, looks like it's coming from that plug, for sure. Oh yeah, look at that bolt, bolt ain't even tight. So that bolt's not tight. Is it in the uh... Ow! I can't tell if that's even in the, the turbo drain. Can't win them all. Fuck, I can't win any of them. I'm gonna go find me a Lone Star somewhere in this hellhole and uh, hit the road. See y'all later. Who is that, Uncle Buck? Jesus Christ. That turbo is smoked. It's just pissing oil out the downpipe. And the downpipe's not connected to the exhaust, so there's that. And we're attempting to drive it about four miles. Jesus. Back to his brother's house. See how it goes. I actually filled up the, uh, topped off the power steering. Topped off the power steering and uh, now the brakes work, so see what he's got going on now. Back on the road. He said the gauge was the temp gauge is almost pegged, but it's still nice and cool. The thermostat hasn't even opened up yet, so I can put my hand on it. So I guess we got a bad gauge. His oil pressure gauge isn't working either. Uh, it does have oil in it. We brought more oil just in case. So crossing our fingers, get this out of my life. <laughs>